So Amazon Q is a fully managed chat assistant, AI powered, they can deploy within your organization. So Amazon Q enhances the employee productivity by supporting key tasks, such as question and answering, knowledge discoveries, writing email messages, summarizing text, drafting document outlines, and brainstorming ideas. Hi, my name is Syed. Thank you for being on the Claydesk channel. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about Amazon Q, which is the AI-powered assistant for your business use. So, some of the benefits here. First is accurate and comprehensive answers. Amazon Q generates comprehensive responses to natural language query from users, right? By analyzing information across all enterprise content that it has access to. Now, it can avoid incorrect statements by confining its generative responses to existing enterprise data. It also provides citations, by the way, to the sources that are used to generate the response, so you know the references. It's simple to deploy and manage, right? And it also undertakes complex tasks of development and managing machine learning infrastructure and models so you can build your chat solutions quickly. Amazon Q connects to your data and ingests it for processing using its pre-built connectors, document retrievers, document upload capabilities, right? Pretty powerful. So configurable and customizable. Amazon Q provides the flexibility of choosing what source or sources should be used to respond to your queries. You can control whether the responses should only use your enterprise data or use both enterprise data and knowledge. Now, data and application security with Amazon Q, right? It supports access control for your data so that the right users can access the right content. Its responses to questions are based on the content that your end user has permissions to access. You can integrate your Amazon Q web experience, for example, with any SAML2 supported identity providers to manage user authentication and authorization. Broad connectivity in Amazon Q, it offers out-of-the-box connection to multiple supported data sources. So, it could be any data source that you wish to connect to or with Amazon Q. So, in addition to enhancements, Amazon Q offers many, many additional power features, right? First, filtering metadata using docu document attributes to customize and control the end-user chat experience. So currently supported only if you use the Amazon Q API or the Q data source. Source attribution with citations is also pretty powerful, right? So if you use this particular feature, you can upload files and chat is another feature, right? You can upload directly into the chat and then to perform web experience tasks. Third is quick prompts. So feature sample prompts uh, for you know, the capabilities to allow users for the Q experience. Amazon Q includes a filtering by document attribute feature. Now with this feature, you can customize and control chat responses for your end user using attributes or metadata attached to documents. So for example, if data source type isn't attached to your documents, for example, you can specify in the chat response be generated only for specific data source like Slack. Or you can allow end users to restrict the scope of chat responses using the attribute filters that you've selected. So for example, an end user can choose that the chat response be generated using documents from specific data sources. So filtering chat responses using metadata has you know, many benefits. First, ensure response relevant and accuracy. You can specify that the responses be generated from and limited to authoritative sources within data. Now control response content. You can also specify the type, for example, PDF, right? And others, business requirement documents. For example, documents that responses will be generated from. For example, scope chat responses. You can help your end user to narrow the scope of the response and then come to the answer quickly. Amazon Q offers set of documents uh, retrieve, right? You can also create custom document attributes that are more representative of your organization's data and use cases for more 
fine-grained chat response controls. So the Amazon Q Web Experience chat response provides in-text source citations for responses that use the organization's data source and knowledge base as a source. Now each source listed in the response provides several attributes. For example, citation number, and citation is provided in a numbered list, right, and, and a sentence. Now, end users can view the source of the response by choosing the numbers. Snippet, the content extract from the document from which the generated response is based, is also there. Text segment, text extract from the source document that is used for source attribution. And then the title of the document itself as a source for the generated response. So, next is URL of the document itself, right, for the source. So, the Amazon Q Web Experience welcome page, for example, provides sample prompts to help end users understand the types of questions and tasks that they can ask, you know, for the web experience. Sample prompts are not enabled by default. So, if you're an AWS Management Console customer, for example, or you're, or you're using the AWS Management Console, you can access Amazon Q directly from the dashboard itself. So let me give you a hands-on demo of Amazon Q. So let's, let me demonstrate, let me give you some hands-on. So you see the power and harness the power of the AWS Management Console as well as some of the services. So I'm going to be using the latest service which is Amazon Q to create an S3 bucket, right? So for example, uh, let's go ahead and open up our AI powered assistant right here. And then it says, ask me anything about AWS. Now, before I actually do this, you'll notice there's another option, the cloud shell right here on the bottom left corner, or you can actually open up your cloud shell from the top navigation bar as well. And once the cloud shell is open, you can then simply uh, start to create or give some commands so that you can actually uh, run commands right on the AWS platform itself. So if you need to create an S3 bucket, you will simply uh, write the command here and it will do it for you using command line interface or the CLI. Now a point to note here, which is a simple notification, the Cloud Shell will migrate from Amazon Linux 2 to Amazon Linux 2023 starting December 4, 2023. So just uh, give you a handy notification if you need to take a look at this also, right? All right, so here's the Cloud Shell. I've already opened it and here's my cursor right here, but I don't know the command. So for example, if you do not know the command how to create the bucket using CLI, well, I'm going to ask the Amazon Q. So navigate to Amazon Q and just simply ask the question, give me the command to create an S3 bucket named Cladesk. So I'm going to create an S3 bucket and I'm going to name the bucket Cladesk. Well, sorry about the typo right here, right? It's, it should be T-H-E. There you go. So give me the command to create an S3 bucket named Claydesk. And if I search for it, it's going to go ahead and search. Let me close the PowerShell right here so you can see the screen here. Perfect. So it gives me the command to create an S3 bucket named Claydesk using the AWS CLI, which is right here. AWS S3 API create dash bucket dash dash bucket called Claydesk, right? So I can simply copy the command. I can copy the code. But some key points about this command are also explained. So this is a great, great learning way also as you're doing hands-on and creating and working with AWS tools and services. So the dash dash bucket, for example, parameter specifies the name of the bucket to create, which is Claydesk in this case. You can name it anything you want. And as a homework, go ahead, just simply follow these steps and create some buckets. The region does not need to be explicitly specified. So for example, the command itself is AWS S3 API, right? You can simply say uh, create bucket. So you don't need to use the region itself. By default, the bucket will have public access disabled and access permissions can later be modified once the bucket is created. Then you can set bucket policies and assign roles and groups and so on, okay? So once you have the command copied, open up your shell right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste, okay? and hit the enter key and it's going to go ahead and it's going to create the S3 bucket. Well, how do I know if the bucket has been created, for example, or not? So let's go to S3. 
I'm going to go to services, of course, and then navigate to storage, S3. And this will take me to the S3 dashboard. And right here, you will see the bucket created. How easy is that? And it's absolutely powerful. So now you have the CLI within Management Console right handy uh, at you. You don't have to, uh, you know, create or download CLI from uh, or on your machine. Well, if you can, if you want to, you can. But on the fly, you can create the bucket using AWS commands. And that's a great learning way to start learning the CLI commands. Uh, and of course, Amazon Q is perfect because it gives you now the ability, which is your AI generative AI powered assistant to run commands. And here's my bucket. So if I click on Claydesk, for example, then this is my bucket. Now here I can set properties, permissions, and so on. Okay, so I hope this helps. I wanted to cover and also give you a short demo on the management console itself, Amazon Q, and then how to use Amazon Q and create a bucket as an example. Let me know if you have any questions with this. Let's move to the next lesson.